In the previous lecture, we derived the linear momentum theorem for a material system, and we wrote that in the following form, partial by partial t integral rho u dv over control volume plus fluxes integral over the control surface rho u u dot n d s we said that's equal to summation of external forces um, just to remind you that this equation is a vector equation so it has um, three components three components components in Cartesian coordinates x y and z x y and z for example this would be for the x component for example x direction this would be partial by partial t of integral rho u x dv plus the integral over the control surface of rho u x remember this is the um, what we're transporting times u dot n this is the entire vector ds equals summation of forces okay this is great so far but what we did not talk about yet is the meaning of this summation of forces um, right now um, we're thinking that these forces that are just external to the fluid or if your control volume cuts through the fluid there will be internal forces um, exerted by the remainder of the fluid on the fluid itself so say um, you know you have parallel flow in a, in a pipe and then you for some reason you select this control volume like this so you're gonna have some forces going on over here exerted by this fluid um, A on fluid B okay so you know we haven't talked about that yet um, and now is a good time to talk about it because our purpose our goal eventually is to apply this linear momentum theorem to just a purely uh, fluid control volume so that we get into a differential form that being said we are going to have to select a small control volume within a fluid and think of what forces are acting on uh, this body of fluid okay so we're going to categorize the forces as usual into two types there's the uh, body forces so we're going to talk about body forces and we're going to talk about surface forces but for body forces these are forces that act on the entire volume of the fluid these are external forces exerted by some external field so for example gravity the magnetic field for example if you have a magnetic fluid or electric potential etc so these are forces that act on the entirety of the volume over here we're in the in this class in these lectures we're going to only consider gravity so that the force of gravity on this on this entire volume this entire volume if if the volume is delta v okay delta v the entire force of gravity is df gravity is equal to um, delta m the mass uh, contained in here delta m times gravity then when we when integrated to a material system the force of gravity is f gravity equal integral of delta m g over the control volume which is equal to the integral control volume of rho dg dv times g or rho g dv okay. rho g dv so this is the body force that we are going to consider in this class for gravity the only body force that we're going to consider that's the force of gravity okay now the other type of forces that we will be considering are surface forces surface 
forces. Okay, and this is going to get a little bit interesting over here, but you have to um, bear with me until we eventually get to the stress tensor. But when you take out a portion of the fluid, the remainder of the fluid is going to exercise um, forces in all directions um, onto this part of the fluid, just the same way that this fluid exerts a force on the remainder of the fluid. Now, these are all surface forces because they arise from internal uh, action of the molecules in a fluid as they bump into each other and they uh, exert forces on each other. And we can distinguish between normal and uh, tangential uh, forces. And the classic normal force, or one of the um, infamous normal forces, is the pressure force. Pressure force. Pressure force. And remember, the pressure is a scalar. It doesn't have any direction, but the pressure force is always pointing into a, um, a, into a lump of fluid or into the surface. So this is given by the integral over the control surface of the volume of minus P and D S. And the negative sign here is to enforce the fact that P is just a scalar quantity, right? And then the negative P makes it so that the, f the pressure force is acting into, um, uh, is a compressive force, okay? Now, the other force is the stress, um, stress viscous forces, viscous force. And we're not going to talk about this right now. All we're going to say is that this is a surface force. We're going to write it as the integral of some T dot and um, dS okay, over the control surface. We're not going to worry about that. T is related to the stress tensor. We will discuss this a little bit later. We just want to get um, to the general form um, of, of, this, uh, of, of this summation of forces, external forces. Um, now, bear in mind that the stress tensor, the stress viscous force, does have a normal component as well, in addition to the pressure force. But the pressure is, is, is a little bit different because uh, it is somewhat of a thermodynamic quantity, but it's also the only force that keeps a fluid um, uh, at equilibrium when a fluid is not moving. The viscous forces, the stresses, are due to velocity gradients and the visc viscosity, viscous property of the fluid. The, these gradients are related with the viscosity and they generate these, um, these surface forces. Uh, but the pressure force exists whether there is uh, motion or not. And when the fluid is not in motion, the pressure force is going to balance the gravitational force and otherwise the, f the fluid is just just going to keep, it's just going to move, right? So in a, when you have a, a fluid that is contained um, in a container, there's no motion going on, the pressure and the gravity forces are going to balance, but when there's motion, there's going to be pressure, um, but there's also going to be um, uh, stress, uh, stresses due to the motion and the velocity gradients.